Our friend Steve Brown is an apple farmer from Summerland, Canada, and the episode you're about to see is a terrific video he made and sent to us about some changes he's made to his farm. We hope you enjoy it as much as we did. Thank you, Steve, for sharing your story and for being an inspiration to us all about the sustainable changes we can all make. My name is Steve and I'm an apple farmer. I want to share our ongoing journey towards environmental sustainability. I've been farming for almost 20 years now, and from reading and watching programs like Now You Know, we continue our voyage of making less of an impact on our planet. As Maya Angelou once said, do the best you can until you know better. Then when you know better, do better. In the morning, my wife and I usually have breakfast, get the children ready for school, and then both head off to work. We both try our best to recycle, conserve energy, and be good stewards of the environment. But I want to talk to you specifically about the things that I am doing on our apple farm to make our operation more sustainable so that generations to come can enjoy these wonderful fruits that come from our home on our only planet, Earth. A big part of our carbon footprint was vehicles. So after doing some research, we decided to make a change. A couple of years ago, I purchased a Nissan Leaf for my wife, Amanda. She does a lot of driving since she's a real estate agent. And of course, with three children and all of their activities as well, the car doesn't see much of the garage during daylight hours. Now, buying a Nissan Leaf was a big change for us as we used to drive a big Suburban. And back in those days, we used to have a nickname for our big beast, the Suburb Hog. Why? Because it had an insatiable appetite for fuel. It seemed like every week we were gassing that hog up. With Canadian gas prices being expensive, it would almost always be well over $100 per fill up. And then there was all of the other costs for maintenance on the ICE engine. But buying gas is just like buying food, right? It's one of those necessary things that many of us don't think much about. Well, not quite anymore. Years ago, I remember reading about these guys in Silicon Valley who were trying to make a car run off of batteries. It was better than most cars on the market. Now, there were electric cars out there at that time, but they were either ugly or had pretty poor performance. Not only did that little startup company have better performance than most cars, but the Tesla Roadster also looked pretty good too. Up until the Tesla Model 3, the reality is that Teslas have been largely out of reach for most buyers, and our family was no exception. So when I heard the Nissan Leaf would eventually be sold in Canada, I was pretty excited. After buying the Leaf and realizing that we could have a vehicle that would not only meet, but actually exceed most of our expectations, it was time to take the same technology to a whole new level on the farm. We have an apple orchard in Summerland, BC. Summerland is a beautiful little town that's located very close to the United States border. In this valley called the Okanagan, there's a unique little microclimate that's just right for growing tree fruits and vines, which include apples, pears, peaches, nectarines, and many other fruits. Just like most businesses, in order to operate efficiently, we need machines and other tools. And after thinking about the impact that many of these machines were having on the environment, I decided to start investigating alternatives. So let's start with my primary transportation around the farm to get from A to B. The tractor was slow and too bulky to get around efficiently, so I purchased the Kawasaki Mule side-by-side. -side. Now the Mule was good, as it had decent cargo space, was comfortable to get in and out of, and was fairly quick and nimble. But there were still drawbacks. It burned gas, polluted the air, and was noisy. Also, I was constantly wearing out the clutch due to all the starts and stops I had to do. I couldn't stop thinking that there had to be a better option electric. I started to check the classifieds to see if I could find an alternative that was affordable, but also fit the bill. Now there were some electric golf carts for sale, which I was considering, but then I came across this little gem. Literally, its actual name is Gem Car, which stands for Global Electric Motor Car. This little car was originally built by Daimler-Benz, but the company has now been sold to Polaris. Its power source is six lead-acid batteries, which produce 72 volts. It has a turf mode and a road mode. The turf mode adjusts the speed controller so that the tires don't rip up the soft ground due to all of the torque that the electric motor produces, whereas the road mode unleashes all of the power. Now in road mode, the acceleration is quick and the top speed is about 55 kilometers per hour, which isn't bad for a little car this size. I only needed to do a couple major modifications to the gem car. One was to mount a utility box on the back so I could carry all of the tools and other items needed for the farm. Now the second modification I did was to put a set of new tires on that had some serious traction so I could drive through the mud and snow. Oh, and just for a little fun, I got a little sticker made up that says Tesla on the front, mainly to see if anyone takes notice. So after having the gem car for a number of years, I would never go back to a comparable ICE vehicle. I love the fact that it is whisper quiet 
and it doesn't need all of the never-ending finicky repairs on the engine. And it doesn't pollute to boot. Now, before I go on to the next environmental improvement on our farm, let's get the most common questions that people want to know out of the way. Do you get more than one crop of apples per year? Or how does that work? Unlike some citrus fruits, like oranges, we only get one crop per year. Another common question is, after planting an apple tree, how long does it take to get into production? So on average, after planting a tree in the orchard, it usually takes about four years to start getting a reasonable amount of apples off each tree. So what's your favorite variety of apple? That's a common one. My favorite variety is Ambrosia, without question. This apple is probably the only apple that I can eat all the way through and still enjoy to the last bite. And trust me, I've eaten a lot of varieties the world over. It has this amazing taste. Not too sweet, not too tart, but just right. And when family or friends ask me about the next harvest coming up, the question is almost always, when are the ambrosia ready? So how many apples can grow on each tree? In our particular orchard, in which the trees are spaced two feet by 10 feet apart, we try to have approximately 80 apples on each tree. Having the right number of apples usually ensures that the size will be large and that the fruit will be uniform in color. How many apples do you grow on your farm? Well, on our little farm, we have the ability to grow about six to 700,000 pounds of fruit per year. The main varieties that we grow are, my favorite of course, Ambrosia, but also Gala and Pink Lady. Are you organic? Well, almost. If it wasn't for those weeds, I would say that's one of the most frustrating parts of farming. We try to pull the weeds and cut them down mechanically, but it's almost a full-time job for a farm our size. So occasionally, I do spray to knock them down. Now there are mechanical weeders out there, but up to this point, I haven't been able to find any automated machine yet that works super well. Does it seem crazy to you that we've put a man on the moon and a Tesla Roadster in space, but we still haven't been able to come up with a really effective weeding machine? Elon, if you're watching this video, could you please help us with this? Now that some of the major questions about farming apples are out of the way, let's talk about a few more sustainable changes we've made on our farm. Pruning is a major part of our operation. We actually prune two times a year on our farm. One time is in the winter when the trees are dormant and the other time is about three weeks before harvest to expose the apples to the sun so they get more red color, as that is one of the main parameters that we get paid on. So the old pruners, also called secateurs or loppers, work well, but they're kind of slow and hard on your body when you're making thousands of cuts per day. Carpal tunnel, anyone? The next advancement was air and hydraulic pruners. Much faster, a little heavy, but less work on your body as the air or hydraulic fluid pushes a cylinder that makes the blade cut. The problem with these little beauties though is that they're loud and require you to be attached to a hose. Did I mention that the little gas motors run all day which burn quite a bit of fuel and pollute the air like crazy? Enter the new generation of pruners, electric. Just like your cell phone, you charge the batteries overnight and voila, you have super quiet, super powerful set of pruners that you don't have any of the drawbacks of the gas ones and you're not attached to a long cord all day. After pruning apple trees, you end up with a bunch of branches, which most farmers back in the old days would just push into a big pile and burn. You and I both know that burning anything and letting the smoke escape into the atmosphere is not a good idea. Enter the flail mower. Yes, there are still some yucky carbon emissions and particulate matter released into the air by the tractor, but I would guess that the amount of pollution is way less than burning vast amounts of wet wood and leaves. The other great thing about mulching the prunings is that you add to the organic matter of the soil, which is really helpful. Speaking of tractors, there are some electric concept tractors that I've read about and seen pictures of, but I've yet to see a real world tractor that can carry out the kinds of tasks that I do all day. All the tractors I have are diesel, which I know aren't exactly environmentally friendly. Come on, Elon, we need your help on this one too. But I did just purchase a new tractor last year that is much better for the environment than my old ones. It has a tier four compliant diesel engine, which is one of the least polluting diesels out there. It has an afterburner system. No, not like the ones on Top Gun, but it actually stores up some of the particulate matter in a special chamber. And then at certain intervals, superheats that special chamber and basically incinerates much of the yucky bits, not to get too technical. When I compare my older tractor's emissions to this one, there is a huge difference, at least from what I can see and smell. Plants are like all other living organisms. They need to eat. Commercial fertilizers that have nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and other micronutrients sometimes have their place. But with my equipment, I make most of my own compost on the farm, which works great. Organic formulations of most nutrients are usually much longer lasting and better for the environment. And because of this, 
I can drastically reduce the amount of commercial fertilizers I need to use. Plants need to eat, but also drink. Now, irrigation has come a long way in the last century, from the old ditches that used to divert water from lakes or streams, to the pipes and overhead sprinkler irrigation, to the highly efficient drip systems and automated time clocks we have today. I serve up water to all my apple trees with drip irrigation. This is currently the best and most efficient way, especially when the system is adjusted based on the evapotranspiration rates each day. One other way we conserve water is by using special varieties of drought-tolerant grasses in the rows between the apple trees. Also, during the hottest months of the summer, I let the grass grow long so that even less water is required. Now, bin moving is a big job around harvest time, and in the past, we've done all the bin moving with diesel tractors. Not the best for the environment, I know, but we've been trying to get some of the pickers to use this cool new machine. It has two six-volt batteries, and believe it or not, it lasts all day on one charge. It's a little slow, but it keeps the bins close to the pickers, which is super important. Farm workers like showers, just like the rest of us, so I decided to put one in. After thinking things through a bit, I decided that going the usual route of gas or even electric wouldn't be the best, especially because the location that I wanted to put the shower in didn't have enough power to juice up a standard hot water tank. The great thing is the town of Summerland is named that for a reason. We get quite a bit of sun, so I decided to put that giant fiery ball of burning gas up in the sky to work. I acquired these old solar hot water heaters from a camp that I volunteer at. Believe it or not, they were made way back in 1981. They were upgrading their entire system, so I even got an old fiberglass shower at the same time. This system has far exceeded my expectations. Sometimes we have up to 15 people working on our farm at one time who all want to have showers at the end of the day. And this little system works amazing. The only problem is that the hot water from the panels can get dangerously hot. So I tell all my workers to set the temperature first and then get in the shower. We use elevated platform machines to reduce the amount of ladder work we have to do around the farm. And as with most older machinery, the power of choice has been gas or diesel. But we're looking to change that too. I've been making contacts with other growers in our valley who have already been making the switch to electric. Bob Neville has come up with this platform that actually has a hybrid power system. He left the diesel engine on board just in case, but almost never has to use it. The solar panels charge the batteries, and Bob says he gets almost an entire day's use on one charge. Alan at Old Tower Farm in Karameas has helped to create this little bucket machine, which is all electric and works great. He also recently purchased this electric elevated platform, which he says definitely saves time and money. The future is bright on farms all over the world. Ingenuity and innovation is happening. And with shows like Now You Know, the word is getting out that the green revolution is here. Thanks so much, Zach and Jesse. You guys are not only spreading the good news, but you're able to create top quality content that is also a joy to watch. In the future, who knows what other kind of environmental improvements we could do on the farm. And hopefully soon we'll be able to find a substitute to haul bins back and forth to the packing house instead of using our gas guzzling pickup truck. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit the like button to help share it with others and subscribe to our channel. Also consider supporting us on Patreon. Thanks so much for watching. Now you know.